Hi everyone, welcome back to .md. My name is Michael and I'm an incoming MD PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. Today we're going to be going over my personal statement uh, that was on my MCAS application. So I applied to medical school during the 2020-2021 application cycle. You can check out the rest of my MCAS application somewhere here, but today we're going to be focusing on specifically what I included in my uh, MCAS personal statement. So for a little bit of context, all MD and MD-PhD applicants have to answer the same prompt for their personal statement, which is, why do you want to go to medical school? And so to understand my story when I eventually read it to you, uh, it's important to know uh, kind of like where I was coming from and the unique aspects of my story that will be different for all different applicants. At a very high level, I think when I initially started at Caltech as a freshman, I was very interested in pursuing a PhD and maybe like biomedical engineering down the road. And I just really enjoyed all of my STEM classes during high school. And so this was the original path that I wanted to go down. And yes, in the back of my head, I was always thinking about pursuing an MD, although I didn't really know too much about it. Neither of my parents were doctors. I guess my uncle is a doctor, but um, that's basically all of the connections to healthcare that I have within my immediate family. And so the story that I was focusing on for my personal statement was the process of, of me basically learning at Caltech what it meant to be a doctor and why I specifically want to go to medical school. My experiences convinced me that I wanted to use my training in STEM and mathematics um, to basically help other people through medicine. And for me, the only way that I saw myself doing that was through pursuing an MD-PhD dual degree. Okay, so now I'm gonna start reading the personal statement. I'm gonna go paragraph by paragraph. I stared at the equations scribbled on the blackboard, pondering the relative decay lengths of light waves and photons. My goal was to understand the differences between optical and ultrasound imaging. Instead of treating light and sound as classical waves, I modeled them as elementary particles whose properties could depend on frequency. Suddenly, this perspective offered a new explanation. The kinetic energy of sound strongly depended on temperature, inspiring new ways to improve ultrasound imaging resolution. Late night thought experiments like these have helped my research extend the range of what can be accomplished using ultrasound technology from improving image contrast to actuating drug delivery within the body. So basically the picture that I'm trying to paint here is that I'm a researcher by training. And you know, going into this, I initially thought that whoever would be reading this essay, they would be thinking like, okay, what is this person doing applying to a medical school? He should definitely be pursuing a PhD. And that was my initial attempt. Again, so I'm kind of setting the stage here and you know, basically telling them that where I started was very different than where I am right now. I thought it was okay given my you know, major choice, I majored in physics and also I came from Caltech. I thought that this was a pretty natural story for me to tell and this was very uniquely my story. To familiarize myself with how ultrasound was used in hospitals, I read a breadth of literature and clinical studies. One paper was written by Dr. Sanchez, an expert in clinical point of care ultrasound. I reached out to him to learn more about his ideas on how diagnostic ultrasound was making a positive impact on human health. While we initially connected over his writing, I became fascinated by his work in medical missions. He traveled the world with teams of doctors to help those in need, but explained how a lack of diagnostic tools was one of the biggest bottlenecks of patient care in countries like Haiti. It was almost impossible to treat patients without knowing their underlying illnesses. Okay, so this is where I kind of like plant the seed of the story that I'm about to tell and how I was initially exposed to medicine. It talks about how I became genuinely curious with what it meant to be a doctor and what things that this particular Dr. Sanchez was working on. In other words, this was the start of my path to discovering what it meant to become, to pursue the MD degree. And as a side note, there were actually many different experiences during my undergraduate career that it encouraged me to pursue the MD-PhD degree. I had fantastic shadowing experiences, my translational research encouraged me to go down this path as well. However, you don't want to convolute your story and make it go down like 10,000 different directions. They're going through many, many different essays all at the same time. And so you want your story to be as linear as possible. Focus on one compelling reason why you want to go into medicine and go deep really into that story so the reader can feel your genuine feelings of like curiosity and whatever you're feeling at the time and they can really get sucked into what you're saying. As I continued to learn more about this problem in healthcare, my fascination with ultrasound thrust me from theoretical chalkboard models to the front lines of rural Haiti. With a few friends from college, I founded Atria Connect, a nonprofit organization that teaches Haitian doctors how to use ultrasound to diagnose their patients. We partnered with industry leaders who supported our mission by donating ultrasound probes, 
while volunteer physicians contributed textbooks and years of teaching experience. Armed with ultrasound machines and proper training, Haitian physicians were empowered to better serve their local communities, and we began to see promise of sustainable improvements to the Haitian healthcare system. As our team expanded and vision solidified, I traveled to Grimorne, a small village 100 miles from the capital of Haiti. I helped Dr. Joseph, a Haitian physician, using developing ultrasound skills to perform an examination of a seven-year-old boy named Evans, who was retching with stomach pains. As a desperate mother sobbed nearby, we further assessed Evans' abdomen while comforting him and managing his pain. After diagnosing a splenic abscess, Dr. Joseph explained that the hospital lacked the surgical equipment necessary to treat the disease. So this is kind of like the rising action of the story. Um, I'm continuing to build on how my experiences have further shaped me, and I'm currently in the process of changing who I am and what you know is important to me. Note that at this point, it's still really on in the story, and so I'm really just storytelling at this point. I'm not revealing any major reflections or any major takeaways or anything like that yet. And I think this part of my essay really illustrates a key facet that I think will help you as you write your personal statement as well, which is show, don't tell. I know everyone says this, but really I think it's a very powerful storytelling technique. It would have been incredibly boring for me to just say, oh, I went to Haiti, I saw many different patients, and they were all diseased, and I took away this, 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 right? And instead, I took the audience and and really brought them into what I was experiencing, what I was feeling, by putting you know specific names to specific people, focusing on one particular instance and what was going on in my head at the time. What was I thinking? What was I feeling? I was using very descriptive languages, such as um, words like sobbed and wrenching, for instance. Um, and using these types of words will, again, really help convey whatever point and whatever story you're trying to make in your personal statement a lot better. Personally, I really liked how, you know, at the very end um, of this paragraph, I set up a conflict, essentially. Dr. Joseph explained that the hospital lacked the tools necessary to treat the disease. I was shocked. Atria Connect provided advanced ultrasound probes and made great leaps forward in diagnosing diseases. But this technology was still not enough to solve Evan's emergency at hand. All we could do was maintain composure and reassure both mother and child that everything would be okay. In this moment, it was a set of soothing hands and calming voices, rather than any ultrasound expertise that made the greatest impact in Evan's care. Unwilling to let Evans die from a disease easily treated in the United States, I desperately organized fundraisers to transfer his care to a larger hospital in Haiti with the capabilities to perform the surgery that would save his life. Fortunately, Evans' procedure was a success, but its initial inability to obtain treatment is sadly far too common among patients. I firmly believe innovative technologies are a keystone of transforming healthcare in underserved communities, but I have also learned that sometimes, even the best of these technologies can fall short. During these situations, physicians have the unique responsibility of caring for patients who suffer from extreme illnesses or pass away. So this was kind of like the pivoting point in my story. I explained how I reacted and how I was feeling in response to this conflict that we've spent so long talking about. Again, it also helps put the reader in my head as well. And so contrasting this with what I was talking about initially in the first paragraph of this essay, the primary thing that I was really trying to get across was that technology has the ability to do these really cool things. And I'm still, I really like working on these, developing these types of tools but at the end of the day, they're still not enough. And this was the realization that helped guide me to pursuing an MD degree. It really made me question the ability of technology by itself to actually make an impact on the lives of other people. Ultimately, I envision a future where Han's story is a rarity. In this day and age, research and developments in science are drastically decreasing the costs of medical technologies. I want to continue to leverage this progress by equipping underserved areas with these evolving tools and training physicians on their usage. In the process, difficult conversations between physicians and patients will not become entirely avoidable, but they can become less frequent. This was kind of continuing the same discussion as above. Um, honestly, it's just kind of still continuing, putting the reader in my head, what I was thinking at the time. Um, nothing really new here, so no major comments. Combining my research with my work in Atria Connect has afforded me the opportunity to stand at the intersection of ultrasound research and clinical practice. I am driven by bottomless intellectual curiosity to strive for a deeper understanding of the universe and the underlying gears that make it tick. 
The lines of genius that can be derived from physics help me peer into this clockwork of the world around me. And surprisingly, they have also served as a springboard into learning how to care for others. Physics, with all of its hardball methods and unforgiving attention to detail, introduced me to the humanity within medicine. I found meaning in illuminating the lives of Evans and others amidst overwhelming illness and pain, experiences that drive me to work harder in my research to seek the best possible treatments for patients. This synergistic endeavor that applies both the sciences and the heart inspires me to become a physician scientist. This is finally where I answer the question of, you know, not necessarily do I want to become a physician, but that I absolutely need to become a physician and more importantly a physician scientist. I think this is a rather bold claim and so for someone that's applying MD only or a, even a mixture between MD and MD PhD programs, I'd be hesitant to say words like physician scientist for instance in your actual personal statement. And so I took this final conclusion paragraph as an opportunity to recap the important points and most importantly what I learned about myself and how I've grown from where I was initially at the beginning of freshman year. And through these experiences, this is what made me be realize that I want to become a doctor. So some general tips. I think number one is definitely focus on just maybe one or maybe two maximum uh, examples for your personal statement. I think many different applicants have different facets of the story and you know many different reasons for why they want to become a doctor, but unfortunately 5,300 characters is not enough for you to, to talk about all of those different components. You really want to keep in mind that this is an essay. This is, you're trying to tell a story and therefore you have to convey emotion. You have to have a clear beginning, middle, and end, a rising action, a following action. This is not just kind of like word vomit of like, all the different things on your resume. Try to focus on the quality of your descriptions and really showing, not telling, the reader about, you know, kind of all of the different things and what was going on through your head through a single or maybe two different experiences. Number two is just ask different people for feedback. And I, I would recommend reaching out to maybe two or three different people. You wanna get a variety of different types of feedback from different readers, but at the same time, you don't wanna to ask too many people because then you'll start to get conflicting ideas. Writing is still very subjective. I was very comfortable with asking two to three people and I felt I was very happy with uh, the quality of feedback that I got from them. And finally, probably the most important thing is try and tell your own unique story. Before you even put pen to paper, try and really reflect on the experiences and everything that you've gone through over the past X number of years that have really shaped your desire to become a physician. This is an incredibly complex question, but something that you need to answer for yourself as you begin the writing process. And for me, I thought this was actually the hardest part of the entire application process. It took me literally months to figure out exactly who I was, why I was trying to apply to medical school, and trying to effectively communicate these ideas, not only to the readers, but also to myself as well. Once you have that story solidified, actually writing down like your essay, it's not too terribly difficult. It's important to have a crystal clear understanding of your own story before you try and share with other people, admissions committees, interviewers that you'll meet along the way. So that was my personal statement and some of the key takeaways that I got from my own writing experience and kind of reflecting on my own essays. Um, this will probably be the first part in many different videos that I'll talk about maybe like the why MD PhD specifically essay, the significant research, um, stuff like that. I don't know when I'll actually get around to making those videos. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video or you want to offer your own feedback, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Please also make sure to like and subscribe the channel. It really helps a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.